Jainanadanandini Tagore, the 26th of July 1850 to the 1st of October 1941, Bengali, Jainanadanandini Debi Ganadanandini Debi was a social reformer who pioneered various cultural innovations and influenced the earliest phase of women's empowerment in 19th century Bengal. She was married to Satendranath Tagore, a scion of the Jorasanko Tagore family. Early life Jainanadanandini was born to parents Abhicharan Mukhopadhyay and Nistrini Devi of Narendrapur village in Jessore, Bengal Presidency. Abhicharan, a Kulan Brahmin, became an outcast by marrying into a Parali family and was disinherited by his father. In accordance to the prevalent custom, Jainanadanandini was married at the young age of seven or eight to Dabendranath Tagore's second son, Satendranath, in 1857. In contrast to her idyllic life in Jessore, she found herself confined behind the strict purda of the Tagore household at Jorasanko. In 1862, while pursuing his probationary training for the Indian Civil Service ICS, Satendranath asked for Jainanadanandini to join him in England. This request, made to his father Dabendranath Tagore was however turned down by the latter. Around this time, Jainanadanandini's brother-in-law Hamendranath Tagore took charge of her education. She was also tutored briefly by the famous Brahmo educationist Ayodhyanath Pakrashi. Upon Satendranath's return from England in 1864 as the first Indian member of the civil service, Jainanadanandini went to live with her husband in Bombay. Bombay While in Bombay, Jainanadanandini socialised in the European circles and partly adapted to English customs. This shift in social role required her to dress appropriately, for which the traditional Bengali style of wearing the sari became too unwieldy. During a tour of Gujarat with her husband, Jainanadanandini improvised upon the sari worn by Parsi women. She created her own style of draping the ankle, palu over the left shoulder, as opposed to the Parsi style, so that the right hand remained free for courtesies. She even advertised in the monthly magazine Bamabodini Patrika offering to train other women to wear the sari in her novel style. One of her first pupils in Calcutta was Mrs. Sudamini Gupta, the wife of Bihari Lal Gupta, ICS. The style soon became popular among the Brahmo women of Calcutta developing the eponym Brahmika Sari. While in Calcutta, Jainanadanandini, breaking the customs of the upper caste household, accompanied her husband to a Christmas party thrown by the Viceroy, Lord Lawrence in 1866. Prasanna Kumar Tagore of Pathoriagata, who was also among the invitees was deeply outraged by Jainanadanandini's boldness and left the Viceregal Palace in shock. Her father-in-law, Dabendranath Tagore did not take kindly to her independent spirit either. It is speculated that this caused much discord in the Tagore household. Jainanadanandini left Jorasanko in 1868 to live by herself in a mansion on Park Street, adjacent to Dabendranath's residence. In spite of this proximity, the two of them never interacted. However, around this time she developed a fondness for her younger brother-in-law, Rabindranath Tagore, who became a frequent visitor in her Park Street house. Jainanadanandini returned to Bombay with her husband in 1869. The same year she lost her first child within a few days of birth. Her son, Surendranath was born in 1872 while the couple was living in Pune and the following year, her daughter Indira Devi was born in Bijapur. In yet another undaunted act of courage, Jainanadanandini appointed a Muslim woman as wet nurse for her children. Leaving newborns to the care of a wet nurse or a governess—always belonging to some Hindu castes—was common practice in affluent Indian families of the day. However, Jainanadanandini resented leaving her children in the custody of servants, often against the wishes of her own husband, making evident the emotional contours of a nuclear family that were already beginning to evolve in her mind. Her third son Kabindranath was born in 1876, during the family's brief sojourn in Hyderabad, Sindh. England In 1877, a heavily pregnant Jainanadanandini Devi set sail for England with her three children. At a time when an Indian woman crossing the seas was unheard of, let alone without a male companion, her fortitude created a social sensation. 
She was received in London by her husband's uncle Nanandramoan Tagore who, in spite of being the first Asian barrister and a Christian convert, shared in the shock. After briefly residing at Nanandramo and Tagore's house in Kensington Gardens, Jane Anadanandini moved into a house on Medina Villas in the seaside town of Brighton, Sussex. Satendranath joined her in England with the onset of his furlough in October 1878, along with his younger brother Rabindranath Tagore. Her initial year in England was marked by grief with the birth of a stillborn child, and the demise of her youngest son Kabindranath. She arranged for Kabindranath to be buried beside Dwarakanath Tagore's grave at Kensal Green Cemetery in London. However, she and her children soon developed an intimate friendship with Rabindranath. Her daughter Indira would eventually become Rabindranath's lifelong confidant. Upon the completion of Satendranath's furlough, he took up a post in Surat while Jainanadanandini returned to Calcutta with her children. Calcutta. <laughs> 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 In Calcutta, Jainanadanandini took up residence in a bungalow on Lower Circular Road. Yet, from the memoirs of her daughter Indira and niece Sarala, we learn that Jainanadanandini never relinquished her attachment with Jorasanko. She took an active role in Rabindranath's marriage and even mentored the young bride, Rinalini. With time, her relationship with Rabindranath permeated into the domain of his creativity. Jainanadanandini started assisting him with the performance of his plays, often encouraging other women of the household to participate. Thus came, Valmiki Pratibha, Kalmrigaya, Raja O Rani, Meyer Kila and Bisarjan. From Indira Devi's recollection we also learn that in spite of her high standing, Jainanadanandini did not socialize with the Calcutta glitterati of her time. That Calcutta society was not favorably disposed towards Jainanadanandini either is evident form an article in the October 1889 issue of the popular Bengali journal Bangabasi, which slandered her for acting in the play Raja O Rani. Ironically, the Tagore house at Burjitalau where the performance took place is today occupied by a ritzy gentleman's club. In 1890, Jainanadanandini moved in with Jyotirindranath Tagore who had lost his wife Kadambari Devi in 1884. In 1891, Jainanadanandini Devi introduced her nephew Abhinindranath Tagore to E. B. Havel who at the time was the principal of Government College of Art. The collaboration between these two artists would eventually lead to the development of the Bengal School of Art. Jainanadanandini's position in the Tagore family is difficult to situate. On the one hand, she is among the few women who presided over the Maghatsev celebrations at the Brahmo Samaj, while on the other she is known to have advocated marriage with the non-Brahmin Kuch Behar royal family which brought her at loggerheads, yet again, with Dabendranath Tagore. A woman who once went to England just by herself did not allow her son Surendranath to go to England for higher studies. Her maternal anxieties notwithstanding, she never objected to Surendranath's many radical misadventures. While she single-handedly nursed Rabindranath's daughter Mira Devi through her difficult pregnancy in 1911, she also fell out with him over the issue of withdrawing her grandson Subarendranath from Santinaketan Ashram in 1921. Yet, her relationship with Rabindranath remained untarnished all her life. In the words of her daughter Indira Devi, My mother had a quality of centrality, that is the power of attracting people around her, owing to her hospitable and hardy nature. In 1907, Jainanadanandini and Satendranath visited Jyotirindranath Tagore in his house at Morabadi Hill in Ranchi and started living there permanently from 1911. She died in 1941. <laughs> <laughs> Literary accomplishments Among the Tagore family women, after Swarnakumari Devi, Jainanadanandini participated most actively in the rich literary ambiance of the family. Upon her return from England in 1880, Jainanadanandini began writing articles in the Bengali journal Bharati. Her flair was soon noticed by the intelligentsia. In 1881 four years before the establishment of the Indian National Congress, Jainanadanandini published an article titled Ingrajninda o Dashanarag criticism of the British and patriotism, in which she called for the establishment of a nationwide organization which would have branches in the remote district towns. She argued, Every benefit that the British have bestowed upon us is a blow to our mission of national liberation. In 1885, Jainanadanandini Devi established Balak, the first children's literary magazine in Bengali. 
Rabindranath contributed a number of short stories, poems and plays to Balak. She wrote two plays for children, Takdumadam and Sat Bhai Champa, both of which were highly appreciated in the literary circles. In spite of her many literary achievements, Jainanadanandini Devi did not write her autobiography. Only a couple of years before her death, Palinbihari Sen persuaded her to write a set of memoirs, later published as Smritikatha o Paratani. <laughs> 